Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Ursa Ryan and this is a TSL game as voted for by you. Welcome, welcome. We're playing as Nidalund and Wilhelmina. It's really, really good fun. I haven't played the Dutch in a long time and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into a game on what is possibly one of the more difficult TSL starts and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Very briefly, I would ask that you come to Discord for the save file as well as all the mods that I use for this game. If you're interested, I keep a full list of it all. A little bit of a quick introduction here. You can see I'm playing Deity Plus Plus. We've got a 30 player TSL Europe map, the large Europe as given to us by the Yet Not Another Map Packs mod. It's a very good map, this one. And I've set it to be pretty full on flooding. As you can see, the entirety of my starting area is flooding. So this is something we're going to have to be very careful of later on. I was like, how can we have the full Dutch experience? That's right. Let's have a map that pretty much will be entirely underwater by the time that the first iceberg melts. I mean, what, what more could you want? Now, if you haven't seen Deity++ before, it's two stages beyond Deity. It makes the AI much more tricky. Standard speed, as usual. And we have Secret Societies mode on today because after a little vote that you all put through, the Brigand Court is back. That's right, Dutch Pirates. We'll get to that in a little bit. Now, the main reason I think that most people wanted me back on this map was the difficulty of the TSL style. Now, I've enforced TSL starts on everyone, and we've got 30 players, which pretty much means that every single European Civ will be on this map if they have a TSL spawn. It's tricky. Loyalty is a massive problem because you've got France, you've got Gaul, you've got Germany, you've got Rome, you've got city-states, you've got Norway, you've got England. There's all kinds of problems that the Netherlands are going to have to face here. So loyalty is going to be a massive problem. Luckily, however, I have a very heavy food start because the Netherlands has no natural production at all. Look at all this grassland. Look at the massive lack of cogs. I have like zero production at the moment. Actually, no, I say that I have three production at the start of the game. What giddy heights. But we will be going up to population two in four turns. Now that is handy. The bigger the population of my capital, the less chance that somebody's going to steal it via loyalty. I am, however, going to have problems with the neighbors. Now, Gaul and France are typically very aggressive early game people. Gaul, in particular, cannot be trusted. I have been rushed by Gaul early game so often that I'm expecting at least a handful of losses until we can get a decent game going from here. So bear with me. This should be absolutely ridiculous. England as well has a habit of throwing not only loyalty pressure, but also just horrible, horrible navies. And somewhere Norway will appear with their Viking longboats because, you know, how better to play the Dutch than have consistent Viking raids just all the time. But before we jump into the game, Ursa Ryan from the future invades your ears. I'm jumping in quickly after doing the editing of this series, after playing it, with a couple of things I missed. Mainly there are two things that you should remember whilst watching this one. Firstly, at the time of filming, I was suffering from an internet blackout. I got back after several days away from the house and there was no internet at all. It caused a lot of stress with remote working, but also the setup of this game. It means that there are mods missing from the game that I intended to put in. Now, a lot of people threw Dutch mods at me, map mods, gameplay mods, that I was willing and really ready to use. I couldn't use any of them because my computer was totally disconnected from the internet. So don't worry. I know about those mods. I will use them either in the next game or the game after. So don't worry. I haven't forgot about it. Secondly, the setup of the map, the yet not another map pack map, it has a couple of issues on it that were basically due to me being absolutely frazzled from being at a wedding the day before. You'll have to forgive me. There is a slight setup issue with the number of sieves in the game. What I did is normally what happens. You press true start location, you say forced start and you say 30 sieves. And what the game will do is populate every European sieve up until the point that nobody has a TSL start. Unfortunately, I did the settings a little bit wrong, so what happened is it put 30 random sieves into the game, and for those sieves that didn't have a true start location, which was approximately 10 or so, it just failed to load them into the game entirely. So that was a little bit of a problem. Because of that, this particular map doesn't have a Germany, Poland, or Scotland, for instance, so some of the surrounding sieves are not there. I hope you agree watching this series, but it doesn't actually detract from what was a fantastic game. Europe 
becomes an absolute quagmire bloodbath. It's disgustingly messy, there are several world wars. I honestly don't think that I left anything like out of this game that you wouldn't enjoy. Sure, having Germany on the border would have been a little bit more squeezy, but I think we didn't really miss them. So I'm going to let you go back into the game as I explain the Dutch. Enjoy. I had a really good time with this one. Thank you so much. Now, who are the Dutch and what do they do? Well, Wilhelmina, she's pretty cool. I think some parts of the Dutch uh, spec are really, really fantastic and some are not. Everybody knows that polders are one of the most fun improvements in a game. They basically turn sea into land as you reclaim it and work really well when you have any coast or lake tile adjacent to three or more passable land tiles. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that everybody knows where these are so that they will be just immortalized and protected forever. If I can build a polder, I'm going to be building a polder. <laughs> Why else would you pay Wilhelmina if not just polder spamming? The unique boat, the Dijeven Plavincian, is fantastic. It's like a frigate, but even better. Stronger and with an extra combat strength bonus when attacking defensible districts. I believe... We'll have to just check this briefly. It does take Nitre to build. 10 Nitre. Okay, so it's like a half Nitre cost. So we will need to find a source of Nitre. But if we can get those boats going, my goodness, we're going to become a naval powerhouse. Grote Revieren is very, very good because it gives major adjacency bonuses for campuses and industrial zones, as well as theatre squares, less important, but campuses and industrial zones if next to a river. That gives you some amazing campuses from where would normally be a pretty rubbish camper start, which is kind of what I've got. I also get culture bombs when completing harbours, and I can build dams and flood barriers even quicker. Flood barriers are going to be super super important. Finally, kind of the worst bit really, Rario Orania is going to be, you get a small trickling of loyalty per turn. If I send trade routes to my own cities, you can kind of use that to force cities to stay loyal, but it's kind of a little bit of a rubbish weak thing. And then trade routes to foreign cities or from foreign cities gives me extra culture. I'd be lucky to be getting plus 10, plus 12 culture until the late stages of the game with that. So it's a small bonus. Really, the Grote Revieren is just so much better, and we're going to be rushing our unique boats. If we can just become a naval powerhouse and focus on harbours already, for instance, I can see a decent harbour followed by a decent mausoleum there. That sounds pretty decent to me. We also need to get campuses. And I think industrial zones. Industrial zones play by the usual rules where if you can stick a quarry down on a stone, you can stick an industrial zone down a nearby like that. That'll boost it nicely. And one thing I don't want to do is get rid of too many of these marsh tiles for a very good reason. I will have to sacrifice this one, however, if I put the government plaza down there, let there's a plus three. Okay, that gives me the plus four industrial zone. That's pretty decent. But the reason I want to keep as many of these marsh tiles possible is the Pantheon choice. If I can accumulate a bunch of faith, then I can get myself the plus two production from marshland tiles. Now that will turn this start into something that I can actually use. The Etaman Tanki is also another option that I could use to make that just a little bit better as well. If anything, I've got too many marsh tiles because I want to put stuff down everywhere and I can't. I can't afford to. Maybe can I move the harbour? Maybe take a slightly suboptimum harbour to put the mausoleum down somewhere else? Maybe. We'll kind of, we'll freeze this as an idea for now, but we'll kind of go from this. Now, again, it's the, the Viking longship rush at the beginning. It's the Gaul rush at the beginning. These are the things I'm most afraid of. However, as I've mentioned before, we do have Brigand Court on. I want to basically get pirates as soon as possible so that I can give myself the unique Secret Society boat that comes with them. I'll show you all that in a second. So exploring is going to be the first thing I want to do. The best way I have found of getting that Secret Society as quickly as possible is traveling along the north coast and finding the Cliffs of Dover. That will hopefully unlock it for me. The other thing I want to do is pull up my culture as quickly as possible so I can expand and get as many of these marsh tiles into my capital as quickly as possible. I'm also going to go for sailing because I'd like a navy. Now a navy does two things for me. A galley is 30 melee strength and sat in my capital will make it much safer to initial gaul attack. It also means I can build a bit of a navy to try and keep 
Norway at bay. Whether that's going to work or not is another question. There is France. We have magnificent France today. Paris is there. Now, what I'm hoping is France will not like me regardless of what I do. There's minus seven on them. There's no point sending them a delegation because it'll only give plus three and they will like or probably denounce me anyway and it's a waste of 25 gold. If they're closer to like minus four, minus three, I'm tempted to do it. Minus seven, there's no point. What I'm hoping is that France and Gaul go to war really quickly. If they do that, then I might be all right. Basically, anything that keeps France's initial early game units at bay is going to be good for me. I'm also not going to be able to expand very well Under in the, the early stages of the game. There's just going to be crown, no space on the map whatsoever. So I almost want to just go a bit military here and fight my way Benzard. out. Here is England. Honor to meet you. There's the Cliffs of Dover and the Owls of Minerva I've just found as well, including the Brigand Court. There we go. I'm just making sure that I pick this up as quickly as possible. And there we go. If I kill a Barbarian camp, I get plus one trade route capacity. This is a modded secret society, if you hadn't noticed, because of course putting pirates into the game is amazing and it makes me so happy and makes me want to drink grog and rum as I play this. It also gives me one phantom flagship unit i do have to build it unfortunately you don't get it for three which i think is unfair but probably is fine but that phantom flagship unit is just amazing now that i've unlocked this i'm actually debating whether i go for it immediately or do i no i do want to go for it immediately like i was thinking um uh, a pingala start might have been a pretty good thing there but no, for me, it's worth doing it. Eleanor was on a minus five. It was tempting, tempting to throw a delegation her way, but in the end, I chose not to. Whether that's a, <laughs> the correct choice, I'm not sure at the moment. We'll, we'll see. Oh, it's always tempting when you see a Sattler fairy, isn't it? Unfortunately for me, oh, they're going to protect it already. <laughs> There's just no way I could be able to sort of steal it and then survive. 140 military strength. The warriors would just go bump and swamp Amsterdam, and it would be very ugly very quickly. There's Gaul. Now, I'm hoping Gaul are the ones that are going to just declare war on France, like, almost immediately. Minus 23. He already massively dislikes me. Interesting. Oh, that's a point. Ah, by taking a secret society so early, and unfortunately it's a modded one, what's going to happen is that none of the AI are going to like me because they're going to be a different it's secret serious. society to everyone else. That is a little bit of a problem. We're going to have to keep an eye on that. Peace. Sailing is done. I'm going to stick to the bottom of the tree today to get joint wars and also maritime industries. I'm going to be using diplomacy to kind of promise different people that I'm going to be taking their side in any conflict and then running away as soon as the actual war starts. The typical <laughs> the mercenary way, I guess. The pirate way? I'm going to be friends with nobody. The Dutch are going to be absolutely hated. Oh, did you see that? Rumour has it that Gaul has it just declared war on France. That is the start we were waiting for. God King as well. This is hopefully going to push me towards the uh, Pantheon choice that I was looking for. Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. Paris already just took basically half its health in one hit. Gaul is not going to be messing around. That will be good for us. A weakened France on our border means that, in theory, we might be able to capitalise on that a little bit and maybe steal some of the perimeter cities from them. Look at that, Paris has already fallen. Wow. Well, Amsterdam is going to have a huge loyalty uh, spurt here, so I'm fingers crossed we'll be able to take advantage of this. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we will be able to, but we'll, we'll kind of hold on. There is the monument finished. Do I want to get a settler going? Do I want to beeline the Phantom flagship? That thing is very useful and we could in theory launch an attack on London or maybe even keep ourselves safe from Norway. The flagship is amazing. Two range strength, 25 range strength, and as soon as we build a lighthouse district it gets even stronger. I think it gets plus 15. It'll be 40 strength, pretty early doors, which is an amazing thing. So I can either build it or I can buy it for 400 gold. It's going to be tough, going to be tough to get that, but joint wars are almost a thing. And you can normally get a little bit of gold from people on large maps like this, especially if we just accept the fact that everyone's going to hate us. Might be a good thing to do. I think I'm going to build a galley. Just one galley I think will keep me safe from barbs, but also if Norway does appear, then fingers crossed they'll like the fact that I have some navy. It might help a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is settle a city on that tile and aqueduct over to this point and then put another industrial zone there. I think that works nicely. Look at that. Bom, 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 bom. Lovely, lovely use of the river there. Okay, that should be good. Blood plains over here, so we do need to keep an eye out for flooding area. 
How far does the flood come in, actually? Quite far, like all of this northern coastline of France is gonna be lost to the sea level rises, so we've gotta be very, very careful of that one. A barb encampment. Now, this is what I was talking about. If we kill this thing, we should be able to get a free trader. And, you know, Lario Aranya, it's it's uh, it's not the best bonus, but if I can get two trade routes going immediately, that is plus four culture per turn, and that will help me get an early game government. So, it's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, look at that, France counter-settling. They're like, we don't even need Paris. I'm going to just keep settling towards you. Crazy people. I think Gaul are just throwing their massive kahunas around at the moment, but we're just going to have to accept that. Joint wars. What we're doing is effectively using the AI's inability to get on with itself against them. So we'll be able to see that, like, for instance, Gaul has denounced pretty much everyone they've met so far, which is relatively amusing. Would you give me gold for a joint war? Yeah, you would. Now, I call this the high-risk method because Gaul are right on my border, but by doing this, I'm joining in the international effort against Gaul. Gaul is now at war with everybody, and on these larger maps with Deity++, I don't feel so bad about using diplomacy to kind of fudge my way into a little bit more gold than normal. Trust me. We're going to need it to survive this game. Also, it should hopefully give me the ability to get my Phantom Flagship nice and quickly. There's a Barbarian Outpost taken, a little bit more uh, Iriscore, as well as giving me an extra trade route because of the Brigand Court. If I see barbs, I kill them. This is the sort of war, by the way, where effectively as soon as I can opt out of it, I'm going to nope out of it very quickly. <laughs> I'm just going to sort of say, okay, Gaul are quite scary, so, you know, We'll just ignore them for a while. Oh, look, an actual friend. There we go. England are my friends. The Dutch and the English. Forever friends. Let's see how long that one lasts as soon as I become a proper pirate. Actually, England quite likes pirates, really. <laughs> They've been known to dabble. There's my phantom flagship. My first sea unit. It's uh, 25 strength, 25 range strength, but this thing will upgrade very quickly. The partisan conqueror. The Fighting Flotilla, the Third Eel? No, 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 no. Boaty McBoatface. Ah, yes. The evil Boaty McBoatface. The Scourge of the Seven Seas. Now, making friends with the English is a little bit of an interesting thing, because kind of war with a naval sieve is not a bad idea, but I'm thinking Sweden and Norway might be just as good targets. I also have a promotion available, and these promotions on my uh, ship, they're just amazing. This unit and all adjacent naval units get plus five combat strength versus barbarians. It's okay. Uh, I get 50% gold when plundering traders at sea. Not too bad. Plus two movement. That's what I'm looking for. We've got a seven movement boat and I should be able to use that to explore very quickly. There's Norway as well. Now I'm going to have two boats by the time they can judge me. So fingers crossed not going to hate me too much, no, minus 13. They're going to hate me a lot. And Luckily for me, however, I should be able to use my boat to kind of scout everything out before too long. And look, there we go. That is a second promotion from the Natural Wonder just above. Don't mind me if I move my galley to do exactly the same thing. What are the chances, do you think, of me picking up the Etaman Danki? It's, it's low, but... Imagine plus two science and plus one production to all marsh tiles in the Empire. That's a lot of marsh. Oh, I feel like I have to give it a go. It is high risk because it effectively means that I'm losing one of my marsh tiles, but you've got to give these things a go, I think. Otherwise, what's the point? What is the point in life if you don't give these things a go? I think actually I might just stick it on this tile up there. It's, um, yeah, you've got to get rid of one marsh tile. I'm just thinking whether or not I stick it down south in order to get a good theatre square spot later into the game. That could be a good option for me, but maybe if I stuck it there, that gives me a better theatre square later into the game. But it means I'm spending gold, and I'd rather use my early game gold to get traders. Okay, 49 cents. This is going to be absolutely pants, but... Just hold on to that thought, because I'm just about to pick up, fingers crossed, the Pantheon that makes my marsh tiles even better. I hope. The AI normally doesn't go for it. We'll see if they do today. Now, Norway are not currently skulking around my land, which is a good thing. It's a very good thing. Fingers crossed, they won't. This unit and all adjacent naval units get plus one attack per turn. There's the promotion. Perfect. I've also got my galley to have a little bit more combat strength when attacking as well. This is good. Astrology has been boosted twice. I 
think it's probably worth picking up animal husbandry and mining quickly. So we'll do that one, two. And then after that point, I'm going to beeline to Celestial Navigation. I want the lighthouse up and running to get my capital up there as quickly as I can. But equally, it would be really, really handy to make my uh, pirate ship, my phantom flagship, even more powerful. Also, I told you my piece was uh, a bit phony. Look at that. I'm already at peace with Gaul. It was a total, total ruse of the war. And in return, my trade routes can give me some delicious, delicious culture and gold. Three and two. What's the better route? I think Bill actually is the better route because it's actually less turns to complete. And I put a trading post in there, so that'll be a good combo. Just picked up 20 diplomatic favor from a tribal hut. Anyone want to buy that? Norway does for 117 gold. Perfect. I don't need it myself. That works pretty well. I think otherwise, let's get this uh, trader going to Rem. That's a nice city. Perfect. We're up to 8.5 culture per turn. For us little plebe players, that's not a bad start at all. I need 25 faith to found a pantheon. I have 25 faith. So I'm just going to gamble on getting rid of God King now. And I'm going to pick up the plus four gold from my trade routes. It's a lovely thing indeed. Do we get maritime industries? Am I going to be building many boats? Probably will be building boats. It's quite a nice thing to do. Although a gogi is actually quite handy as well. Because I'm thinking sending a small land army down to deal with the French. Now that might not be too bad an idea. I've unlocked horses. I haven't got too many of them. There are walls down in this city. So I'm actually now thinking, do I go for a bit of a land fight? Do I go for a land scrap? Who knows what I need to do? Really, this is, it's a game of many halves. <laughs> a game of seven halves, you could say. There's Cardiff, surprisingly. England found them first, but they do want a Eureka for the wheel. That's not too bad uh, something to get. Norway is convinced that my two boats is a strong navy, which is quite reassuring. I'm also just looking. This map seems to be missing Scotland and Germany, which is strange because I filled it up with every single sieve I could fit on the Europe map. And that's very little further over than I think they are. There just doesn't look to be a Germany on this, which is a bit of a shame. But what can you do? Have we still got our favourite pantheon? No. No is the short answer. Unfortunately, it's been taken, which is a shock. Seeing as pretty much every single game I've played, the AI never goes for that one. They've gone for the Lady of Reeds and Marshes. Okay, well, never mind. We'll have to just adapt. We'll have to go for something a little bit different. Now, I can see that I have one, two camp resources by me. So I'm thinking a nice early game one would be Goddess of the Hunt to get plus one food and production from camps. That'll help my city grow a little bit further. Monument of the Gods would help me to rush the wonder. If someone else has gone for marshes, it may be that that wonder gets stolen. So I might not be able to do much about that one. But as I say, you have to try these things, don't you? Otherwise, how can you sleep at night? Let's do it. Goddess of the Hunt. That's a bit of a kick. Never mind. Well, maybe in that case, we can probably get rid of the marshes. We'll see if we get the wonder. If we get the wonder, that's great. If we don't, then we might just clear all the marshes and do a bit more of an industrial start where we kind of just level everything. There is Spain. Hello, Spain. This is always a bit of a question. Do I let my pirate captain go and explore the world? Because he's really good at it. Good vision, good movement. Or do I keep him nearby in order to use him for defense? I think I'm going to have to use him for an aggressive, aggressive purposes. I don't want to let him go too far. So I'll let the galley explore instead. You know what, we're going to adapt. We're going to adapt. The loss of that pantheon has really kind of hit me for six here. I don't want this wonder. Even if I get plus two science and plus one production to all of the tiles, they're still going to be a bit rubbish considering how limited space I've got in my capital. And seeing France so weak on my border and consistently at war with Gaul's vampires, which look horrifically powerful and I love them to bits, I'm actually thinking of not going for the wonder, letting someone else build it. We're going to instead, I'm going to start to clear the marshes. We're going to go for a Magnus start, clear the marshes, get loads and loads of food into the capital, make a huge capital, and then turn it into a Pingala paradise of production. I think that's going to be the best thing to do. There's the granary just to help it to grow a little bit further. It's a bit of a counter strategy to what I would normally do, but I think it's good. Instead, we're going to go for mining and I'm going to go into bronze working in order to pick up spearmen. So if I've got iron, uh, we're going to do a bit of a spearman rush on France and I'm going to see if I can steal these couple of cities as well as take a city of my own to go 
from one to four cities along this sort of river system here. Yeah, and just basically use Gaul's War to help us out. I think that might work really well. So that, I think, is what we're going to do. Feels a bit weird, but I like it. I like it a lot. Let's pick up another warrior. Where's my other warrior gone? He's exploring. <sighs> Exploration's not so good with warriors. I'm going to save it until I've got some horsemen and we're going to do that instead. In fact, why am I doing that when I could be getting this campus sorted? Uh, if I get rid of the marsh tiles, hang on. Now, let's just reassess this quickly and see if there's a better way of arranging my districts because there probably is if I think about it hard enough. If I were to pick up an aqueduct on this tile, turn this tile into an industrial zone and then go through oh no that means that campus would miss out so let's just think about this a little bit more okay re we're redoing this entirely get the harbor on this tile and then we'll pick the mausoleum up over the top where i've uh, gonna fail to build that wonder that'll be a better mausoleum spot for it being honest it means i can quarry this tile which will give that improvement we can no no, no, I mean aqueduct that tile. Then I can go for the industrial zone there, and then I can pick up the government plaza there, which gives me two plus sevens. I think that works really well. I'm just trying to think of as a better arrangement of this. It means I can then use this city to get a plus seven as well. This city will have a nice plus five. I think overall that works. So we'll stick with that for now. Yeah, okay, cool. That's that's awesome. So that means I can put the campus down on this tile. And equally with the sun god, you can see, boom, that's a lovely tile. Four food, two production, three gold. I need as much production as I can get, because my goodness, I have none of it. The Ottomans. Ah, good to meet you, Ottomans. The, the question I always ask myself when you just when meet you someone like that it was is, are they enemies of anybody? Maybe, but no one, nobody we know. They will, however, go back to war with Gaul with me. Oh, it's so risky, but it's a... Uh, Good fun. Let's do it for the gold. Yeah, cool. Yeah, let's go for Magna Star. I don't typically go for these, but I think with the chopping it helps. Oh, I've just noticed, look at that, I only had plus five loyalty. Oh, ho, ho, ho. goodness me. Loyalty on this map is absolutely ridiculous. I also just saw Eastern Orthodoxy. Who has this? Spain. Feed the world, yes. Bring that over. I always like a feed the world religion. It always works well for me. Russia. Hello, Russia. How are you? Everyone good? Everyone good with you? Okay, they, they are known, known entities. That's interesting. One's working boosted because I am killing things with my pirate ship. It's very handy, actually. I should give him the gold upgrade so that every time I kill a barbarian, I get extra stuff extra gold. That'd be very nice if I did that. Well, yeah, I didn't think this through, really. Gaul have units where I was going to settle, uh, and they're plundering my traders. Hmm, uh, now that is a bit of a pain. Okay, well, we'll have to just sort of sit here for a second then. Oh, well, I'm getting more from this war than I would be if I wasn't at war, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's just, yeah, a bit of a pain. Now, before I put the camp down on this tile, I am going to use a builder charge, I think, to remove the woods, because I'm going to end up removing this district anyway, or removing the, the deer at some point anyway. So I think actually just making sure that I'm using everything Getting all of the different production that I can. That just works for me better. There we go. State workforce is boosted a little bit there. That's great. Um, and then I just need one more build up, which I'm going to do just by buying him. And then we'll go from there. Oh, France are immediately turning around and looking at me. Indeed. That's intriguing. Okay, they have horses. We kind of expected that they would have horses because their cities have just gone up to 34 strength, which is a bit tougher than I would like to see. I think they're in a golden age as well. No, they're in a normal age. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so we shouldn't have too much of a problem keeping my city together. I reckon free inquiry would be good here because I'm going to build a library soon and that'll give me a little bit more inspiration. Lovely stuff. I think they heard me chattering, didn't they? They were like, oh, he's going to try and attack me, is he? Okay, we'll, uh, we'll go after him. Provision. Provision's nice. We'll take that quickly. It means I can start kicking out some settlers with the gold I'm getting. How's the loyalty going to be here? Minus two. Hmm. We're going to give it a go. I think we should be able to just about pull this off, especially if I get a trader sent to my own city, like people say that I should. So, 
That will give me two extra loyalty. I think that's all I get from an internal trade route. Yeah, there we go, Feather Starting City. So that will give me just a little bit more. Don't mind me, France. If I just quickly pick that iron tile up. Oh, that's right. I can't get rid of marshes yet because I haven't got irrigation. Okay, we'll do that nice and quick. That's perfect. I don't think there are any farms I can stick down. No, there is. There is a farm over here. Right, let's go do that quickly. Lovely. And Amsterdam will give me, that will give me a bunch of extra food and production in my starting city as well as a bit of loyalty there we go perfect but what i don't want is gaul sending too many units towards me here that could be problematic yeah this this is this is very much problematic because gaul get huge combat bonuses depending on how many units they have stood around them so yeah peace peace with gaul quickly there we go phew okay he's gonna get distracted by the need for peace I'm actually quite glad about that because he was looking very frightening. In fact, actually, can I distract him with another war somewhere else? No, he's at war with Suleiman, apparently, and also England, but it's, uh, it's France I would like him to be at war with. That's the distraction that will keep me safe, I think. There is the irrigation boost. Perfect. As long as we pick up as many boosts as we can, we can get as many dedication bonuses as possible and hopefully hit a golden age after all this is said and done. I'm wondering whether England would be a good target for me, actually. London is just so lightly defended and I could stick my pirate ship here and attack twice. That is an option for me. I think France is more of a problem in terms of being on the direct border with me, so I think I'm going to focus on France, but yeah, England is... Okay, we'll, we'll have one more friendship cycle. They are good friends. They're keeping me safe, stopping me from having to look in two different directions at the same time. That's interesting. England will sell me some iron. Enough iron to make two swordsmen. Two swordsmen would give me a reasonably decent army to take on France with the right government choice. If I had... Uh, if I had my battering ram sorted, which I could do pretty quick, but I'm thinking this is not a bad opportunity to go. Um, if we get iron working, I can then beeline towards um, mana arms really quickly as well. Be another step up. Yeah, I like this. I like this idea. This is this is not a bad idea. Iron mine complete. Swordsman boosted. Hinduism has been spread to me. That's choral music to give me extra culture. Not the best one for me, personally. I don't need that one in my life. So let's go for a government plaza, as I just were thinking before. We'll just plop that down quickly, like so. Lovely. And fingers crossed that'll get me some more governors, and we can go from there. Oh my goodness, that was crazy. Oh, they've already gone to 39 strength. Goodness me, it's almost like Gaul has forced them to become better at war. They are just terrified of being invaded. I wonder what's causing them to be that strong. Men at arms, maybe? Could be men at arms. That is probably the most likely explanation. So I might be able to pull off a little bit of a decent combo here. My ally or friend, England, really wants to go to war with France. <laughs> who, would, who would figure that one? She's going to give me, like, everything, which is awesome, including all that iron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare war, use the gold and the iron to immediately, well, in a second, upgrade the warriors, which will give me... So I've probably done that a turn or two too early, but that's fine. Um, let's get a third warrior in quickly, just so I can do the triple in a second. And I'm just going to get rid of some excess iron by selling it off quickly to Russia. There we go. Perfect. Now I can just move these units in a little bit quickly. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to see me from Rem if I take that builder, so I will. Now I can go to all of the other people around France and say, wouldn't you also love to be at war with France? Yes, is the answer. So Gaul already has joined in. I believe Norway were itching for a war as well. No, they've decided suddenly to go all shy about it. Never mind. Spain are in though, as of the Ottomans, and that's kind of about it. So really it's it's Norway and Russia are the only people now not at war with France. They should be a little bit stuck for friends now. And also look, Boaty McBoatface on Ireland has found a barb camp. Nice. That means I've got a spare trader now. Gorgo. Hello, nice to meet you. Um, is there anything fun that we can do together? No, just an open border trade, make friends right from the beginning. I guess that's probably fair. In fact, actually, you should be friends with me. Uh, there we go, that delegation and the open borders has worked. Fingers crossed, they will be friends. Okay, right, attempt two, iron working. There's swordsman one, there is swordsman two. And I just need to purchase a little bit more. So hang on, I'll just get some whales in. That's great, but there's no need to get the sugar because I was just about to buy that in myself. 
There we go. So we've got sugar going as well. Amsterdam is fairly happy, as is Dusseldorf. Got a little bit more culture in. I know I'm sending my traders through French territory. It's not particularly safe, but honestly, I feel like we can just about back it up now. And look, Gorgo will give me a... I think I wanted... How much iron do I want? How much have I got? Eight. So I need 12. How much would you take for this? Actually, if I throw in my sugar, they'll give me quite a lot for that. Okay, that's good. That's good. So I can do that trade and then I can go and buy the sugar as was originally presented to me from Russia for less gold than that. Perfect. Look at that. That's a, that's a bit of mercantilism for you. One, two, three swordsmen all ready to go. And we're looking good. We're looking rosy. As I attempt to use a builder to absolutely trap these horrific giant crabs and in doing so get celestial navigation, which is a lovely thing. You can see I was attacked. France attacked my swordsman and did quite a lot of damage, even though I was fortified and defended. And that's purely because of the plus six combat bonus they get, as well as just being annoying. So I'm just holding fire, healing that unit a little bit. Whilst I move my swordsman round, I've got a spearman here. What I'm going to try and do is bring the spearman through the road and over the river to here to see if I can then get my units around and get this city surrounded and um, sieged as quickly as possible. I think, I think that's the best thing for me to do. I've almost got the government plaza finished as well. That's a wonderful thing. I am unlikely to get too many more marshes destroyed in my capital round about now so i'm just going to move magnus over like so and as soon as my government plaza is done pingala is going to get plopped down oh yeah get excited for this amsterdam is on nine population nine pingala is going to have a whale of a time in my capital the good thing about having magnus over here is i've still got somewhere to buy settlers from and i'm just keeping an eye out for some good settling spots there's a huge amount of floodplain and river and all kinds of like really decent places that I could put dams and things like oh, Amsterdam is so good at dams like I just need to put down a couple in random places you can only put one down per river but it's always worth just keeping an eye on the where is it there we go river labels look at that because sometimes the rivers will change sometimes not all the time but sometimes. I'm really hoping that Gaul actually helps me out on this one a little bit and moves a unit round. Oh, they just attacked the Spearman twice there. It's probably not a bad result for me, but they are throwing units at me a little bit and I am not enjoying it. In fact, actually though, we can, if I move my swordsman to there, and then this swordsman there. There we go. City siege. Wonderful. Let's get these walls down as quickly as possible. Yeah, this attack is not going to go well. I thought the swordsman would be a good enough rush. As you can see, they are doing a lot of damage to me here. A lot. They have just left the catapult out though, which is a little bit of a mistake, but I don't know if we're going to be able to take that one on. Hang on. Let's get that wall rushed through. I don't mind if I lose a one charge builder. That is okay, generally speaking. Heal the spearman. And yeah, oh, that catapult is tough. It's really tough. I think we're going to have to pull back for now, just protect ourselves and generally speaking just wait until we can upgrade a little bit here we go plus four combat strength that's a nice change we like that and oh unfortunately all the great generals have been taken i was just thinking about buying one with gold but people have gone a bit crazy on the great generals alas forms a core out of the military land unit not so interesting what we're going to keep an eye out for though are admirals that give you the fleet and core promotions because I can use those on my phantom flagships and they're really good. Look at the flooding on this map though. The entirety pretty much, apart from like a couple of hills of Denmark is just lost. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. I'm really looking forward to seeing this in full flow. This city is a prime watermill candidate because it's got two bonus resources in it. Look at this, one food, one production and two more food equals a very happy city. Oh, you, oh, Gaul just took a barb encampment as I was about to get my pirate ship to it. I was like, that is a free trader for me, or a trade route, I should say. How frustrating. Also, oh, the horse has just about found my farm, which is incredibly annoying because that is going to then heal itself unless I can convince it to back off, which I might be able to if I move my spearman around here. It might not want to stick around. You never know. France wants peace. Mm. It's tempting. It's tempting, but at the moment, whilst she's at war with everyone else, I think I'm going to push through. We're going to try and push through. Oh no, she has made peace with Gaul though. 
which is kind of the more annoying one. I would like you to stay at war, please. There we go. Production has been salvaged from the wonder that was not to be. In fact, actually, the marsh ended up staying there. Intriguing. Okay, now what do I want to throw that in for? Do I want the Warlord's Throne, which gives me 20% production every time I take a city? That's if I'm going to go for a very warlike game. Or do I go for the audience chamber, or sorry, the, the ancestral hall to get the extra three builder? I think I'm going to go Warlord's Throne. It tends to be a better choice in the longer run, but we'll see. Yeah, France's cities just get stronger and stronger, so we're going to have to bide our time a little bit. Just until, just until we have the strength to really take them on. It won't take too long, I don't think. We're just going to keep an eye on them. Everyone's still at war with them. I, I, again, it's, it's the Gaul counterattack. That's, that's the sort of double attack that I'm looking for here. But it also might keep my <laughs> traders alive just a little bit longer, which is always, always a fun thing. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'll just finish off engineering to get myself some catapults. Uh, then I'll go for harbours to get myself a lighthouse, but London is a prime target. It's 11 population. None of the other cities on England are very high pop at all, which is kind of quite true. It's everyone's stuck down in London. So if I can take the capital, I'm hoping that pretty much should be Eleanor knocked out immediately. I might need a little bit of a navy to do that, but, you know, not a huge amount, so that's that's fine. It's always the question, do I get catapults and take other people's cities, or do I get settlers and build my own? I think I'd rather just get catapults. Why build it yourself when you can take it from somebody else? That That is a good life lesson that I think Siv has taught me. Just <laughs> steal it. Steal it from someone else, it'll be fine. It'll, it'll probably be fine. I'm going to move all of my army over to London. We have nine turns in order to organise myself so that I can do this attack on London. First up, I want Researcher Pingala. That's a really good combo, but it means I'm going from 17 science per turn. If I just flip this around a little bit to 28 science per turn. That's a big old boost. That is a big old boost. Perfect. Once we've got Celestial Navigation done, I'll get the harbour sorted. And once the harbour's sorted, we're going to beeline again to Apprenticeship. It's the best sort of ship, the Apprenticeship. Celestial Five Navigation, you say? Well, that's a good excuse to build a harbour and to get a lighthouse, which makes my Boaty McBoat face even stronger. What a stallion. I also realised I haven't got ship building, so I'm just quickly frying some galleys together to give myself a little bit of a navy so that I can stop England from getting to me. Yeah, I mean, I basically own the seas and you win most uh, combat in Civ 6. Oh, how is that for a risky route? We're about to declare war on England and I'm going to send a route to Cardiff. In theory, it goes around the safe navigable seas. 14 gold, 2 culture. I don't mind if I do, but I mean, that's probably going to go pear-shaped, isn't it? We just, we just know it. Quadrimes, there we go. That's also the ability to embark all of my units, which we are going to subtly do now. No one can notice the fact that we were all stood suspiciously on the shore, ready to go. Okay, I know it's cheeky, but 204 gold per turn to go to war with Spain. Thank you, Ottomans. Thank you so much. And again, now it's an exercise of making sure the world doesn't hate me too much by getting people to basically join in with my war. <laughs> if everyone's at war with them, then it's somehow justified, you know? There we go. <laughs> Five people have all declared war on Spain literally on the same turn. And luckily for me, Gaul has taken over most of France, so they are shielding me very nicely from any retaliative strike. Very good. Very good indeed. Oh, a great admiral. Oh, that's a good thing, actually. A very, very good thing. Oh, there's so many good early game great admirals. I love not this game. Alas, not this game. Oh, unable to declare surprise war. Not I'm going to totally lie here, but never mind. Oh, we appear to have declared war on Cardiff. Okay, well, um, I guess that's a good thing in the sense that I could probably take over Cardiff at the same time as London. It's not really what I wanted to do, but I'm not going to complain. Well, that's an unexpected deal. Iron and diplomatic favour for gold and the Shroud of Turin. That's a relic. I mean, okay, I, I don't have much use of faith, but relics are worth a lot of money later in the game when people start to buy them for crazy amounts, so I'll take it. While I've got all this gold coming in, something a little bit different to do is to get great engineers. So James of St. George is a good one because he'll give ancient and medieval walls in the city. I can use that just to sprout them around Amsterdam, but also now puts Imhotep up. Now, I need to save 2,525 gold for him. 
But once he appears, that will be very, very good because I can use him to rush through the mausoleum and two other wonders of my choice. There should be some good wonders left by that point. Oh, look, England, dear, oh dear, you appear to not be friends with many people at all. They're already at war with France and with Gaul. Now, Norway is not going to let me just uh, declare war straight on them. But what I might be able to do, I'm going to lose a little bit of gold per turn on this. But we're just going to declare surprise war. Betrayal emergency. Yeah, this isn't going to be good. Um, we might get a lot of aggro for doing that, but I think it's worth it. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Davalex, Dareboy91, Truffa Askby, Paul Coffey, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, and Nim for all of your support, as well as everybody else who engages with the video and helps me to defeat the algorithm. Thank you so much, see you next time!